Hello and welcome. You're here with me, Charlie Tumblr, and in this video we're going to be flying the L39 Albatross on DCS, and we're doing a mission called Syrian Milk Run, which is a very quick and easy mission, hopefully. Um, we have just had a phone call from the station commander, and he said that there's a um, dairy farm off to the northeast that's being harassed. There's something unusual going on by the dairy farm, and we've got to go investigate. Um, the guards of the factory have reported, uh, sorry, spotted some vehicles and men gathering at a small farm about 500 meters from their position, and it seems highly likely they're insurgents preparing for a raid. So we've got a scramble. Uh, we've got, I'll show you the rockets in a minute. Um, we're gonna, we've only got a bit of fuel because there's not a lot available at this point in time. Um, and uh, when we get airborne, there should be a fire to help us see what's going on. It's only about 15 kilometers away, so it shouldn't take a few minutes. And if we look at our aircraft, on the outer pods, we've got. Uh, little rockets and the inner pods we've got gun pods and then under the nose because uh, we're in the ZA Zulu Alpha edition uh, we also have 23 mil cannons if we need them. So let's get this thing started. Ooh. That one, that one. And then this is not a standard startup but I go like this so I don't forget things. Put the radio to channel one which is air traffic Turn that on, and then hit the turbo button. Give it a couple of seconds. We can hear it cranking in now. And we fire up the engine. And when this gets, this needle gets to about 20, I'm just going to un, uh, uncage the uh, throttle to get out of idle. That's that. Close the canopy. And seal it. We are going to use um, the beacon to get home, but before we do any of that, let's flick all these switches. I don't have drop tanks, so I don't need that one. There is a little hidden switch underneath here, we'll do that as well. Turn all these on, doesn't hurt doing anything. And we're going to set up the beacon to get home. So if we look here, we've got a beacon here. Uh, it's got a frequency of 295. So we're going to plug in 295. So we'll go on the outer wheel, 29, scroll that in. And when I turn this on, we should be uh, hear it beeping in a few seconds. Really takes a few seconds to warm up. Or have I confused it? There we go, EDF. So there we go, that's beeping away. So we'll put that on manual. And turn that off. And on here, that's telling me where that beacon is. So it's off to my right on a bearing of 120. So the beacon is over here somewhere in that tower. So we use that for getting home. That's just the startup doing its thing. Set the flaps to take off. So that's landing flaps, take off flaps, and in flight. We can close these covers. Back on some oxygen. Turn on the visor. Uh, we're not going to use these today, so we don't need that. Don't need to touch any of this stuff. We are pretty much good to go. What I'll do is I'll set up the weapons. So I'm going to use the rockets first on the outer pods. So we need to kind of let this way. So we need to turn on these switches. So that's missiles. Uh, that's missiles and rockets. And then I'm using the outer pylon. So if you look, this is the fuselage of the aircraft and the wings sticking out. So we can use the outer ones. And then there's a little switch here, which is the master arm, which I have on a, a different joystick. Let's fix it off, and that way I know I'm good to go. So let's. Uh, we're on channel one. Yep. Let's taxi out. Yeah, yeah. Call Start two it up one. one. Request startup. Call two one. Clear for startup. Wind three zero zero at two meters per second. Call two one. Request taxi to runway. Taxi ground. Call two one. Clear to taxi to runway two eight. The parking brakes are already off, which is down here, so I don't need to worry about that. The uh, taxing on this is interesting, it's differential steering, a bit like a, a Spitfire where you have to kind of hit the brakes and the rudder to get it to turn and if you get the power too slow it uh, gets quite hard to manage. I'm going to try and 
whack it around before I run out of steam. So the briefing said, after departure, turn right heading 060 and look for the smoke on the horizon. So we'll see what we can see. Yes, yeah, because it's me that's on the run, me, you dollard. I also hate the fact that it's probably me, Colt T1, because there's just no other options for call signs. Okay, the QFE is 738, so we can actually change this if we want to. So that's 738. It doesn't do very much, but it's to do with the navigation system, essentially. Right, let's get out of here. It's a little light. About 200, so let's get airborne. It's very, um, very light when it's at low speed, so you just have to do things carefully. Gear's coming up, and the flaps up. And we'll start a gentle turn on to 060. While doing that, I can adjust my uh, gun sight. I'm going to use two degrees depression and that for me tends to work it's not what the textbook says there's a thing about speeds and heights and all that kind of thing um, but I don't bother with that 060 zero zero, so should see some smoke up ahead eventually Forces have fired some white smoke at their position to help find them. When you get close, they will fire red flares towards the rebel position. Oh, there we go, so 060. It's actually a little bit less than that, 050. Not close enough. We'll go have a look. Do a bit of trimming. Now, if you look at the rocket pods, we've got. Uh, what is that? Five. About 16 rockets, 32 rockets altogether. That should be enough to destroy whatever's out there. So that's the industrial complex. And it was off to the 500 meters to the northwest, I think they said in the original briefing. Which is where those little white buildings are, I think. It's got to be there. We should see some flares going off in a few seconds. That's looking good. Okay, so they're firing flares. I can see the flare there. It's got to be that building down there. So let's go have a look. Let's see if we can see anything, or if they want to try shooting at us, that would be foolish. See down there. So we've got a couple of buildings. Oh, well, they're definitely shooting at me. That's not good. And we've got a truck there and a pickup truck there. So it's two pickup trucks. Right. Let's uh, introduce them to our rocket base friends. This thing, um, you can snap the wings off if you're diving too crazily with it. So try not to uh, go in full speed a little bit now and it has got air brakes as well that will help uh, where is that farm that's it there those three buildings we're trying to do as much damage as we can on this first pass uh, i can see some guys milling around down there as well get around a bit Let's see how that does Well, there's definitely a secondary there. 
That's the truck going up. Let's come around this way. I definitely saw the second truck shooting at us as we were climbing out there. some air brakes on this time. Okay, we've eliminated the rebels. So I can end the mission now, but I will score some bonus points if I land back at base and park in the squadron dispersal. So let's do that then. Uh, that's where the navigation bit comes in. So we've already got that frequency plugged in, that 295. Let's have a look at these poor guys outside. We can have a quick zoom in. No, oh, there's cows all over the place. But there's also some dead insurgents and they're burnt out trucks. So we did a good job there. Okay, pause. So we're heading back on 295. I don't have to have ADF selected, it's still showing me automatically. I'm not sure if that's a bug, um, but it showed me that the base, the beacon is over here off to our left. So let's head that way and we'll also report in. Call 2-1, inbound. Call 2-1, fly heading 150, port 1-1, QFE 738.26. Telling me to fly for 150 for 11, one, so it's a, he wants me on a heading of 150 for 11 miles. 11 kilometers, I think, because we're in a Russian aircraft. But this way, anyway. The beacon um, is here, it's not at the end of the runway. Some beacons will have an outer and an inner marker, which is why we have those two dials on the right. Roger. Um, so we're going to head for this kind of. We're heading down this way. Um, but if we were going direct, it would take us to this point and we could just do a round break. So the air base is over there somewhere. What we could do as well is if we quickly measure, the runway heading is about uh, 290. So if I quickly on here, dial in 290. I'm using the tail end here, which is it's the wrong one, but it'll do. 290. And turn it, and then we know when we're turning. Don't remember we're on a 290. It should be right. And we can tell when we turn if we're too far to the left or to the right. And it's going to be. Not bad, so we're off to the left a little bit. Off, sorry, off to the right a little bit. So let's come around this way. Get the power. Put on those air brakes, the teeny tiny air brakes underneath here. Really small, so they don't really take the speed off very much. Let's use the gear as an air brake. Flaps down. Now I'm too fast, so even though you see I'm clicking the flat button, it's not going to do anything. It may drop down later by itself. Call 2 1, check landing gear. Wind 300 at 2 meters per second. Runway 28. That's just the low level alarm going off. Flaps coming down. Let's crash into the runway. This is not an F-18. Down we go. Do a bit of break in. It's a bit long. We can't can't whip around there, unfortunately. Let's go down a little bit further. In fact, we could probably turn around the runway. Taxi to parking area. 
Harrop. Nice to send the stop. Steering system is not my favourite. You compare it to the nose wheel steering on other aircraft. So definitely an acquired taste. Okay, that should make it a bit easier now. We need to park down there on the squad and dispersal. Crash into one of our elite MiG-21s. This is uh, 2015, the Syria does not have a lot of air power at this point. Close enough. Uh, let's make that safe. And tough power. Oh, that one. That one. And that's it. Flick all the switches, turn all the dials, and that's the mission completed. We can see the score. Uh, we only scored 20 points, but the results is the important thing. Um, so we're out of 100%, we scored 100%. We did everything we needed to do. And uh, can we see dead? So we killed. 8 insurgents and knocked out 2 of their uh, trucks. So there you go, a successful mission in the lovely Albatross L39. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions, write down below and I'll get back as soon as I can. And as always, stay safe and happy hunting.